Hi, welcome back. Um, so I, I've demonstrated a number of the videos on the Pyrocast implementation that I realized I haven't actually discussed how Miracast works. So to that front, um, I decided I should probably make a video discussing how Miracast specification works in general. And I um, bought a whiteboard just for that purpose, you know, for you guys. Um, so let's get to it. Um, so Wi-Fi, or yeah, so Miracast is built on top of Wi-Fi Direct is a specification that allows two wireless endpoints to connect to each other directly without going through a router and you need specialized hardware support for that and um, so after the two wireless endpoints have established a Wi-Fi Direct connection um, so if you're familiar with the OSI model that will be layer 2 and below and then after that the the sync will assign an IP address to the source, so um, the source is typically your phone, and the sync would be, say, the Pyrocast or any commercialized uh, Miracast receiver. So the receiver will send uh, the phone or any other source a IP address, so that's layer three, and then after that, the actual Miracast exchange occurs. So as you can see on this diagram, uh, Miracast actually takes place on two different sockets. Um, so the first socket is a TCP socket at address 4172. So this is where all the control plane stuff occurs. So uh, once the IP address assignment is completed, uh, then the, you set up the TCP socket and then the, the, the two endpoints starting to exchange RTSP packets. Right, so, so what are exchange? So the, the, the session capabilities and then other uh, session ability and capabilities, um, for example, the refresh rate, uh, the frame rate or resolution and whatnot are exchanged in here, as well as the uh, uh, port number to use for the UDP socket for the actual data transfer. And on top of that, there's also, uh, if, you, if you're familiar with the RTSP protocol, it also allows you to, to uh, stop and pause or, or resume the playback if you will so that's how the uh, how, how they indicate to each other that if you want the uh, the playback to start streaming or not right so so that's the TCP socket and then you want to use the TCP socket for data plane control because it's a fairly low bandwidth communication channel all you are exchanging are just control packets and TCP just provide that extra reliability uh, on top of it um, so after the, the control channel and then the session is negotiated, uh, then, then, you, then data start to flow in the data path. And so again, the data path would be flow in the, on a UDP port specified in a control plane. So, so then, just, then it just goes. So, um, so let's take a closer look at the data plane portion of it. So, um, if you if you understand how Miracast works, Miracast is composed of a Miracast stream essentially just video and audio mixed and a packet is sent across the network. So video is always H.264 video, and audio I believe you have the option of either using LPCM, which is um, uh, raw data, no compression at all, or AAC, which is a proprietary uh, format or I believe there's another format that I support, but I don't recall what is off the top of my head right now. So the two stream, the video and the source, uh, the video and the audio source are first muxed into a MPEG-2 transport stream container format. Then the MPEG-2 transport stream is then packetized using RTP header to segment into packets, into MTU sizes that you can fire across the network, or in, in this case, just the Wi-Fi Direct Cloud. And obviously, on the other end, when it's being received by the sync or the receiver, um, the reverse process occurs, right? So we first chain the packets, um, and interpret the RTP packets, chain them up, and then extract the MPEG-2 transport stream out of it, and then, then you separate that further into the actual video and the audio uh, stream to, for playback purposes. So the reason why um, Raspberry Pi is actually a capable platform of doing this is because the Raspberry Pi itself inherently supports native H.264 decoding, right? Uh, 
which a, a software implementation of it is actually fairly expensive um, in terms of resources. So the fact that Raspberry Pi provides a hardware decoder for this end, um, it works fairly well. And given that, um, as discussed earlier, uh, Miracast allows raw audio transfer, which means I could just use the control plane to specify that I want audio to be just in raw format so that I don't need to do any decompression at all on the receiver, which sort of, which, you know, reduces the complexity of the, um, of this, of the design of the system and, um, also a resource use. So, uh, so, so yeah, that's why, that's why this, um, uh, that's why the Raspberry Pi is a, actually a very good platform to implement the Miracast on. Um, so that's generally how the, the overall picture of how it works. Um, what I didn't cover is uh, encryption. So Miracast does support encryption, um, but for my end, I simply disable it effectively uh, in a control path. And uh, it seems fine with us. So, so you can, I, think, I think the thing, yeah, so the Piracast project, I'm requesting having no encryption and the source was willing to, or the phone I was using was willing to cope with that. So, so everything just work as is. Um, some other things I want to talk about is, so I, I happen to work in a remoting business. So, so this sort of design pattern is actually a very common design pattern for any um, telecommunication or, or uh, video conferencing um, application. So except in this case, this is only one direction, right? So you're only going from the source to the sink and then, but in a video, um, conferencing application, it would, it would be a sort of bi-directional thing, but then you will only have basically two, two sets of these, or you can share the TCP or UDP port and whatever, right? But it's a very similar design. Um, and this sort of design is also, uh, what is the, what is the word I'm looking for? Um, for example, like, like, I believe Wii U uh, uses a similar design like this, right? Except they're not using RTSP as the control protocol. That they're using their own um, proprietary message protocol from, from what I read. And it also sports a very similar, they, they, they go through. So if you're familiar, how the, with, familiar with how Wii U works, you, you, have, a con, uh, you have a console, which, and, you, and you, have a, you have a Wii gamepad, whatever it's called, and then it's basically streaming data directly from the console to the gamepad, except they did an exceptional job at reducing the latency, so you can't actually tell that um, there, there is a lag between the gamepad and TV, right? So they did a, did a really good job for that. Uh, right, and then um, another thing I wanted to discuss is, I, I think I covered this in other videos, um, so going back, the Miracast is built on top of Wi-Fi Direct, which means it doesn't need to go through a router, which means it's not sharing the bandwidth with any other endpoints on the network, right? So I know some some other protocols, um, some other streaming protocols uh, go through the actual, uh, the public, well, not the public, go through the router and share the bandwidth with all the other network endpoints um, at, at your place or whatever. Um, so depending on how how much bandwidth is generated by, by your streaming application and how aggressive um, other applications are under, under your network, um, they may simply compete for bandwidth, right? And then what does that mean? That, that means that you, your, uh, your environment may suffer or your streaming application may suffer from huge packet loss, which would then intelligent design would then need to reduce the quality to cope for the lack of bandwidth and whatnot, right? So um, by forcing a Miracast implementation to use a Wi-Fi direct connection, which is an end-to-end -end direct connection. Um, I'm assuming that that's because it guarantees a dedicated pipe between the two endpoints, so you could sort of go wild as to how much uh, bandwidth you want to use to to transfer the data across uh, uh, the the wireless framework. Um, so uh, that's it. Uh, again, let me know if you have any questions um, or you know if any topics you would like me to discuss. Um, and yeah, don't forget to subscribe. I keep forgetting to say that. And uh, thank you for watching. Bye.